This is We The Sales Engineers Podcast, show 273. Welcome to We The SES Podcast, the show for sales engineers by sales engineers with your host, Ramsey Majaba. What's up, SE Nation? Welcome back to another episode. I am your host, Ramsey Majaba, and I am joined by someone who has a great story by the name of Gleb Sinani. Sinani, yeah. And uh, he will share his story, but just as a brief overview, he's a re- Ukrainian the developer devops he did front end back end and he had to move for some reason from ukraine to poland recently and since then he started his se journey and we discussed that move what he did before what his experiences has been since then uh, how he covers globally his kind of unique setup uh, to be a sales engineer uh, so I think it's a great story that Gleb is going to share with us, and let's just jump into the show. Hello, Gleb. How are you doing? Hi. Fine. Thursday evening. What (laughs) was that? Thursday evening for me. Thursday night for you. You're you're about to go to sleep. Uh, Are you a late, like, do you stay up late usually? Mm, yeah 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 i i'm not going to bed like uh, before i would say 12 or 1 a.m okay so we have three hours to chat awesome <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh, so I'm you're yours. the first you're the first person i've ever met with the name gleb uh, what's the, is there an origin to that name or is it just from because of where you're from oh yeah this is a very slavic name i i literally don't probably know other slavic names My, maybe one more boris maybe this one also is like okay. slavic yes that's that's the origin of my name okay. the, maybe you know those um these two names are famous because of first saints in orthodox church really okay yeah yeah gleb is a saint in the orthodox church yeah Oh, now I need to find them. All right. Okay, good. I have some research. <laughs> okay, uh, a minute for research. Yeah, I'll do that later, though. Uh, okay. okay, so are you, where are you located right now? Yeah, I'm in Poland. You're in Poland. Okay. Yeah, I live in Poland now. Okay, do you, do you mind just giving like a brief overview of who you are and what you do? <clears throat> yeah, okay, so... Yeah, my name is Gleb, as you know already, uh, and uh, I've been working in software development for like about six years, I would say. I started um, in a small company, um, and I came there when it was like really small, like several people, five, six, and I started as a backend engineer, uh, and while I grow, I grow uh like fast i tried to work on positions on front end engineer devops like them team lead tech lead uh mentorship of like other juniors and i was working as project manager also like system architect uh well a lot of stuff to do a lot of stuff and company grown and i left when it was about 40 50 people so i did all the stuff in in the company i grown with it and was one of the first people in there and knew all the stuff managed a, a lot of project knew all the things about different projects participated i don't know in terrible an amount of projects so probably 15 okay. 50, 50 yeah okay that's and so I'm looking at your LinkedIn. I hope that's okay. Uh, this was all in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the company was based out of Ukraine. It was a small team in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. And you've since moved to Poland. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not going to ask you why you moved. I think I can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can imagine. Yeah. But why did you, like, you moved from back end and front end development to solution engineering, which in some people's mind might be completely different. Why did you make the choice to move into that role? And is it different? Uh, Well, I like strategical thinking. I like to uh, manage the things globally on the the high level of, uh, on, on high level. 
Yeah, I also like coding and uh, being focused on on writing code, but this this strate strategical thinking for me is the better. And also, I like to communicate with people. I like to understand the personalities. Like like to find the keys to their personalities. So, this is this is something that I can combine in this position. All right, and you you went from Ukraine. You moved to Poland. Yeah, how? I mean, you're moving jobs. You're changing jobs. You went from yeah, yeah, yeah. Change, changed, changed company. Yeah. yeah. So how how was that change? I mean, oh, you know, Poland to Ukraine is not far, but still, yeah. like you're leaving family, or maybe they're coming with you. No, no, no. I just left. I didn't have any like strong connections. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just grabbed my things, grabbed some money, and moved. Was that before you got the job or you just moved and then figured before, out? Yeah, it was before. It was okay. before. I went here. I set up here everything I need, like bank accounts, housing, like my uh, documents, all the stuff. And then I changed. Okay. Uh, so did you have the job ready for you or you had to go look for a job after? Go to look for a job after because uh, this is this is a bit another type of uh, employment. It's not being employed. It's uh, making your own small business unit, okay, and being a, a contractor for the company. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're a freelance sales engineer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. <laughs> what is a freelance sales? Can you work for another company at the same time? I think by uh, by laws, yeah, yeah, okay. um, and trying trying to uh, utilize this opportunity, also trying to find different projects and clients, and uh, communicate with them, trying to you know sell the things, architect the things, maybe make something. Okay. Yeah, as I, as I have a lot of experience in like communications, client communications, team management, all the stuff. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm able. To, I'm more than able to do this. Okay. Yeah, you know, I don't doubt it. The, the thing is, sales engineering is very different. And generally speaking, someone coming in new to sales engineering would require some training, right? Uh, well, so of course. Curious, how would it how would it work? Like, are they do they consider you like, do they onboard you? Do they train you? Or you have to figure out everything because you're a freelance? As no, a no, of course. Yeah, they didn't board me because like, because I mm, started to work with with a different product. Okay. And with a big product, uh, you need to understand the features, the possibilities, the scale of the product, what it can do, what it can't do, uh, like all the stuff. Yeah. And to sell something, to architect something, to propose something, you you need to understand the possibilities and the ways it could be done. Okay. Like, so what you, you can say, you are not marketologist, market man. You are not just selling and saying, yeah, we can do the best. The better things you can imagine. You're saying you're not a salesperson, look. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're, although you're kind of a freelance SE, you're working mm -hmm. like you're being treated as a full time SE within that company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and how do you like sales engineering so far? I mean, you've been doing it for a few months. Uh, well, for a few months, it's officially my position, yeah. but I yeah. did it before, so yeah. Okay. Oh. Well, you did it as like as a like when you worked at the startup in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like different, so let's different let's talk about time. that because I complain a lot about uh, like companies who don't hire sales engineers and force okay. their engineers to come out of like what they're working on, which is building the product, to uh -huh. go sell. What are your thoughts about like being an engineer mm. who has to go sell? I think this is interesting question because. Uh... I can understand the companies that don't hire sales engineers separately because it's all about the budget and the sizes of company. And if it's not big company, like, I don't know, for 20, 40, even hundreds of people, they could probably don't have enough budget to hire such narrow specific people. Uh, and they, it would be better for them to train one, two, or three persons inside the company who are working like architect as architects or just simple developers or something or DevOps, I don't know, or make a team who can mm, briefly create some kind of a, of a proposition for a client 
and try to sell this proposition to client using like sales and you see this is combination of roles yeah yeah and someone probably can manage this process so this is thing i think this is something about budget but yeah when company gets bigger and it looks for a new clients and it needs to make their sales uh, process smoother then yeah of course they they need such kind of role i i i would say in a big company you will see all the kind of roles yeah i mean i do understand it like as a startup everybody does everything yeah 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 but it, it, on the other hand like nobody's going to be good at everything right you might like you might have been excellent at coding mm -hmm. maybe maybe you were the exception to the rule and you were also great at selling but generally speaking it's not like the same because it's different skills different practice you're maybe well you tell me how did you feel about the well, i guess you loved it you said Right? Mm -hmm. You enjoy the communication aspect of it. Did you find it as a struggle to do both at the same time? No, no, no. I, I would say this is a nice uh, switching because okay. you are not doing the one thing all the time. You you can do the technical stuff and then you can do communication stuff. This is completely like different fields of mind, I would say even. Which one did you enjoy more though? Oh, no, I hate this question. I just hate this question because <laughs> that's why I like to all ask the time, all the time people, especially on um, interviews asking what they like the more like I'm saying they're asking which which role you want. I'm saying I like both. I like management. I like coding. I like communication. And they are asking, what do you prefer? And I don't know. I prefer both. I like both. I want to be everything at a time. Yeah, well, so the way I think about it is, like, like I'm in networking, right? I I worked I worked as a network design engineer, and I enjoyed it, but I also enjoyed networking with a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Working with the customers, trying to understand their needs, and and because yeah. you're still building a process, and I would think it's the same for you right now, like mm -hmm. you're still coding, but with the purpose, other than yeah. my boss told me, right? This is the feature that product management came down and asked me so if anyone's being asked that question in an interview mm -hmm. that's one way to look at it. it's like you're doing this like you still enjoy both but now you enjoy doing it for a purpose that's beyond mm -hmm. just a, a new feature right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah 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 that's true it's not so uh mm, you need to think globally about it and uh, take in consideration why are you doing this feature not just do it as as you said because the boss said do you still hate that question or is it, is it better? Uh, no, no, I still, have, still hate. <laughs> What's the difference? Do you, you can, you take... How did you answer? ...reasons or not anyway. It's it's like, no, it's, it's the same state of mind. Right. I would say the, these two things, it's a state of mind. Why One way when you communicate with people, another, another state when you code, third state when you think about things how they should work when you design something so this is a different like yeah different ways of working brain working and i like the brain work in different ways all the time not in one focused way did you is that how you answered the question uh, yeah, I would let it be so. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Like, ah, that's a good answer in my opinion. Uh, okay, thank you. What? What did the? Obviously, you got the job, but like, uh, what feedback did you get from managers or from hiring managers? Yeah, well, good feedback because like a lot of experience, a uh, lot of knowledge, uh, doing things fast because like I get used to do things fast and uh, well well i just uh, like to dig into things you know to um, understand the core sense of things and be able to manage it even on in in, in intuitive level not like taking yeah on the intuitive like level so it's it's something i'm i'm enjoying to understand the things deeply and yeah of course managers love it <laughs> when you just do your work and you do it good and yeah. in time oh uh, the, the the main point is that you're doing it in time right yeah like, yeah of 
course. Nobody wants a demo three weeks too late or a feature. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Deadlines, all the stuff. Yeah. So well, that's something we need to talk about, I guess. But um, like you, you did the SE work when you were still a uh, technical lead and system architect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your view of the sales engineering role or solution engineer role back then? Did you did you know it even existed or you're just doing the work? Oh, this is interesting. Oh, this sounds also interesting question because um, no, actually, well, well, when I started to work in IT in the in the develop software development, uh, I didn't know much because I didn't uh, learn much. I'm self taught, so I just finished like courses and then found a job and uh, learned things uh, on my job. Before that, I was studying physics, so. Okay. I'm a scientist by my degree. <clears throat> yeah. Why, why do you make it sound so bad? Like I'm a scientist. That's a good thing. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's but hard. Yeah, mm, mm, it's it's something complicated to work with. I would say you yeah. you won't find like a job like a normal job being a scientist. It's only being like a teacher or to work in some laboratories, but it's like. It, yeah it's we're very unlikely to find such kind of job i think my point was i've never met an unintelligent physicist right? oh. it just shows like hey i could study physics i could learn coding right? hmm. yeah maybe say same for math yeah math anything like in the stem field like science yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, and when I got to that IT world before, well, at the start, I was just coding and learning the language, learning the like software, the whole stuff about IT, how the system works, how the uh, programming languages works, all the, all these like basic things. And then when you start to learn business side of things, you're getting a bit frustrated be because of that uh, big amount of different roles. And because I was working in a not big company, even at the end, uh, we didn't have like all the types of roles. And when you encounter or such roles, like even system architect, you're thinking like, what, what is it? <laughs> yeah, because like, I'm I'm considered just as a backend engineer, and I'm making those database diagrams and services communications and all this <clears throat> stuff by myself. Not not I'm not system architect. Yeah, and uh, then you get and start to understand that uh, there is a war, way more different positions, like yeah, system engineer, solution engineer, architect, like sales different kinds different combinations of different roles yeah it, and the things getting in more interesting actually uh, at this point okay yeah right, and now that you are like a full-time sales engineer mm -hmm. has your view of the role changed from back then or what what is the view of the role hmm 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 yeah, well, I would say it changed from those times because, like, uh, that time I didn't even uh, thought about having such role as a separate role. Like, I thought someone from technical guys just selling the stuff. Like, project manager or sales guy just takes some say, uh, tech tech man to the call with the client and says like hey we can do the best we can do the great things and here is a smart guy who can who can tell you some smart words <laughs> and he's just sitting and muttering something about like servers uh, devops and stuff and client doesn't understand but get excited and like profit <laughs> yeah but uh, as i said when company gets bigger and you want your process being smoother you better have one person who is able to do like complicated combined stuff. I mean, you just described what every sales engineer goes through still. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you told me nothing has changed except okay. there's a person who's a full-time sales engineer. Okay, who, okay. Who's, who's, who's doing that? Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And you're like, you're located in Poland, you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. You support customers globally? Is that? Yeah. Agree? Yeah. Okay. So, how does that work? Like, I have a hard time keeping up with my customers here in Canada 
20 minutes away from me. Well, uh, this is actually the, um, the cause of it because you don't spend 20, time, 20 minutes of time to get to your customers. You spend zero time to get to your customers, just sending him them uh, Zoom link or Google Meets link and you're on the meeting with your client or with your, I don't know, engineers or, or anyone else. Right. You just send in a link for a like meeting and that's all. You can conversate all the stuff you need. And you you can this one one more prone uh prone on it is that you can at this time you can be in any place. Like right. you can, yeah, you don't need to be in office. If you 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 can travel, you can go outside to some cafe, well, whatever you want. Okay. But I'm like I'm thinking about time zones. I mean, you have people in Australia uh, yeah. on one end, and then people in the uh, okay. in North America on the other end. Are you? Do you sleep? You mentioned you sleep around two two a.m. Is that because of work or for fun? No, no, no. This is just my sleep schedule. Um, yes, this is actually one of the problems being work remotely. Uh, this is usually solved by hiring people in closest time zones. So if you have clients like in USA or something then you probably would hire someone from from that so you have some uh close close time zones or or other way you you can hire you want probably to hire some cheaper engineers in like i don't know uh ukraine russia um uh, india china i don't know and there will be a big difference in time zones uh, in this way, you just uh, speak about engineers, speak with your engineers and say, like, is it OK for you to have a schedule like night schedule? And they are. Yeah, I'm fine with it. And they are just working in this uh, time. I'm not working at nighttime because I'm uh, mainly working with the people from European uh, time zone. I have contacts with the USA people and we just have like several calls an evening. So it's morning for them, evening for me, everyone fine with it. Yeah. I, I mean, I know product managers do that all the time where they're yeah. covered. Like, uh, most of them are in the US, the ones that I know. They have to talk to India, like customers yeah. in India and China, and they have to stay up late or. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. doable. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's smart that they have each, like, you're focused more on European customers and someone in North America focuses on North American customers. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're part of the same team. Uh, or are you separate mm, teams? I hmm. I didn't encounter on the configuration when these uh, people from very different time zones are part of the same team. Okay. Hmm. So you're not part of the same team. No, we are just like uh, separate teams, but uh, communicate uh, with each other. Okay, so you still co like collaborate and work together because one of the major yeah. issues that a lot of SEs discuss is the fact that they don't collaborate internally within their, yeah 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 within their team. So how do you manage that? Oh no no I lied I lied. Uh, actually I have one I have one guy from yeah those uh, USA time zones. So yeah just from my team. Yeah and okay it's it's fine yeah uh, you can do this just your communication in evening times. Or morning times, okay. and you can pass some tasks. Oh, uh, it also could be a plus because you can work on some task, and you can pass this task to that guy who is living in past or in future, mm -hmm. and can continue your task while you go to rest. Okay, go to yeah. Uh, that's go rest. that is doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you have, you still have some, uh, some hours uh, overlapped. overlapped. Yeah, yeah. All right, and like, <clears throat> in terms of like being in Poland, new country, and all that. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, what are some of the, I guess, challenges that you faced with a new, we're moving to a new comp country, move, starting a new company, starting somewhat of a new role. Like, mm -hmm. Are there challenges that you face, or has ever been everything been hunky dory? 
Oh, um, mm, I don't know, actually, because all the challenges I have and all the challenges I experience in my life, I just consider as something usual, regular, just it's life, it happens, you need to do the stuff to live and improve yourself and stuff like that. Yeah, there also was there's obviously there there obviously was some some things I needed to do like to move, to spend some money, to find a flat. I didn't know the language, I didn't know the Polish. So you learned like it? Uh, a bit, a bit because I'm not communicating a lot with locals. All right. Uh, not much. But yeah, I can understand it and can speak a bit. Yeah, mostly, mostly I speak or English or like Ukrainian. Um, so yeah, there was some things like move, find the flats, uh, make the documents, find. How job. did you find the job? Uh, LinkedIn job job you website. You just applied, and yeah, yeah. Uh, some HR wrote me and told that hey, there is an opportunity. Don't you want to? I said yeah, I want to. Let's talk. Okay. Yeah. It was it was some time ago. I I mm, actually I feel some. Mm, it's it's getting low, like interest of, uh, in hiring people yep. these days uh, got lower. Uh, like year ago, I could receive I don't know dozens of HR requests to yep. my link LinkedIn profile, and now I don't. I don't know why. Like. Uh well right now it's a it's a employer's market yeah like uh, there's a lot of not as many jobs mm -hmm. but there's still a lot of people looking to get into sales engineering mm -hmm. work. yeah so yeah i also I, i'm also thinking that uh you know like five maybe more years ago there was a lack of engineers in in the world in general like a lot of companies and not a lot of employers needed people and there was not enough and in somewhere in that time a lot of courses schools trainings appeared yeah. and a lot of people start, start, started to hear that this is a great opportunity and great uh, like jobs and started to learn and now it's a lot of people who are able to do some work, but there, there is, there are too much of them. Yeah. Not, not so many employers for all the employees. I mean, the way I saw it is that when the pandemic started, everybody was afraid. Mm -hmm. And then business really picked up. Mm -hmm. And money was cheap, so there was a lot of startups. Yeah. Going on. Everybody was hiring sales engineers. Yeah, and IT even grown because people stayed at home. They used their laptops, exactly. games, websites, all the software. Yeah, yeah. And then it slowed down. Yeah, and yeah. then people got let go. Mm -hmm. And now the economy is not so great, so there aren't that many jobs. Mm -hmm. Lots of hiring freezes. Lots of like, even if they lose headcount, they're not being replaced. So. It's mm -hmm. much harder today than it was a year ago, mm -hmm. which is lucky, mm -hmm. right? Like we go through these cycles. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am curious, like you mentioned your self-taught. Mm -hmm. What if, if someone wants to teach themselves like mm -hmm. back end, like you mentioned, you, you started with back end, right? Um Mm, it it is an interesting story actually. I was that guy who heard like IT is a good jobs and good salaries, and I touched programming a bit in my university, uh, but I didn't like it because well I was thinking like I'm I'm a scientist. Not, yeah, I'm not the programmer. Why I need to do this I'm thing? Better than programmers, right? Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Something like that. Um. And I learned uh, C sharp a bit in your university to make like simple programs for calculation of things. And when I decided to start learning, I decided to finish my C sharp courses. When I finished it, the last task was okay, now just parse this web page, like uh, output HTML headers 
HTML contact con content. And I was like, mm, okay, now I need to go and learn HTML and CSS. And I started and there was like, um, you can do these things with JS. I was, okay, I need to go and learn JS. And I did these things and I spent like some time for learning like those language, HTML, CSS, JS. Um, then I found a guy who was studying with me and had his job already and was doing like some pet projects or um, um, small, small orders from, from his uh, acquaintances. And he took me and gave me some tasks, like simple tasks for simple projects, pet projects. Uh, I was, I don't know, can I say worked as, as it uh, for some time? Yeah, I got some experience and yeah, and then I, then I just found that company I, I started to work in. Okay, so HTML, well, C Sharp, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Go Lang also was uh, when I when I started to work with the guy, uh, I started to learn Go Lang also. Okay, and then you found a job, and that's where you did most of your learning, from my my expectation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, like I went to university, I studied communications engineering. Then okay, I went to work. Uh -huh. Nothing I learned at university actually helped me at my job. I had to learn everything mm -hmm, from my mm -hmm, job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew know this stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right, Gleb, well, it is time to move on to the not so fire round. These are the same four questions I ask every guest. Okay. You, you we're not in a hurry. You can take your time answering them, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about them. Okay. So, question number one, you briefly answered it, but I would like to dig in deeper. What do you love about solution engineering? Yeah, as I said, uh, I like that this position combines in it communication and hard hard skills and soft skills, like right. technical skills and communication, coding, architecting, speaking with people, understanding people, understanding their needs, combination of those. Skills. So a lot of engineers have a lot of have very good hard skills and not so great soft skills. Mm -hmm. How did you develop? Were you naturally good at soft skills or did you have to develop it? And how did you do so? Hmm. Wow. This is a really interesting question because I remember when I was a child, like like a little one, I, I did not have good soft skills. You know, I, I was that quiet child who just sits on his last somewhere in the end of, uh, of a class and don't, don't speak with anyone. Mm, I don't know, but then, but then some some noisy guy uh, like uh, who is uh, a lot of uh, in communications and stuff just liked me and started a friendship, and I was like with him and spoke with a lot of people. And then when I grown, I like started to know new peoples and communicate with them. I don't know. I don't know how it become like good understanding of people and understanding their thoughts emotions needs i don't know this is this becomes somehow natural good. i i can say the same thing but it, it was not natural i had to really like i was the quiet kid on the side like you know uh -huh. doing my own thing and i had to really like figure out but i find that kids that are quite on the side know how to observe people yeah Yes, that's where I you can read. Yeah, that's that's where you can read people. Now the question is communicating. How do you yeah. practice that? And yeah, that's that's interesting. All right, cool. Uh, the second question, Gleb, is what do you consider if we were to ask your boss today, what is your super? What is Gleb's superpower? What would they say? Hmm. I would say responsibility deep understanding of things and wide understanding of things like knowing knowing you know in in uh, it in product development usually you need to understand the sphere you are working with like if you work with transport you need to understand how transport systems works and what the needs of the client if you work with healthcare you need to understand how it this sphere works finance all these things and I know like at least a bit 
about a lot of things, uh, of different things. And I like to, um, to learn new things, to learn something I don't know. And, uh, well, I think this is one of the points that gives me deep understanding. And I think this is one of the, one of the things my bosses would love in me in, that I can understand things quickly. Okay. Nice. That's a good superpower. Understanding quickly gets so hard because <laughs> there's always a new feature. There's always something else that's coming. There's always a new language. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, you just yeah. mentioned three with so like being able to understand things quickly is a is a it is definitely a superpower that we need to develop if we don't already have that i have a hard time with that sometimes um, <laughs> all right uh, third question is is there a book or habit or is there a book or resource you'd recommend either for those who want to become sales engineers or those who want to improve their technical skills in terms of like coding hmm well, no, no, probably not, because you can find a lot of uh, good recommendations around the internet, a, lo a lot of uh, lists with good books, good sources, good courses, like pick any of them, like okay. pick any of them and you will get and you will understand the basic things uh, in minimum and some additional or advanced things also. I would add, pick pick one of them and stick to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, because we have like you know shiny object syndrome. I've I've done it. I've picked a book to read about Python, and then uh -huh. it's like, no, no, I'm gonna do JavaScript. It's like, no, yeah. no CSS and HTML. So yeah, pick one and stick with it. So I yeah. guess the resource is Google, right? Or maybe Chat GPT. Go ask Chat GPT for a list. Yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely need to stick it. Oh, and one more uh, recommendation for those who are looking for it. Is that uh, I remember that um, when I was uh, studying a course, um, I had problems with understanding of some topics, like at the start. And there was very, very helpful hint for me at the start of the course is that if you don't understand something, if you don't understand some topic or Mm, like uh, mm, some sentence or something just skip it skip it for now and return later right return after some some amount of topics and you will get it you will get it clearer this is really helpful hint this has helped me very much yeah it's kind of like in an exam where you get a hard question and you skip yeah. it and then you come back to it and yeah yeah mm -hmm. no that's a good point all right uh, last question of the not so fire on Gleb. Is there a habit you're working on today to improve in your personal or professional life? Mm. Definitely not going to sleep early. That's not one of the habits you're working on. <laughs> hmm. Habit to work. Yes, yes. Um, networking. Uh, I would like to know a lot of more people who is in IT who can share with me knowledge. I even can think of, and okay. I don't th like think it exists, or uh, I just am not encountering it with uh, with the, my day to day work or from people I'm working with. Okay, so everybody listening, if you're in IT or outside of IT, connect with Gleb, and he will say <laughs> yes. Uh, if they want to connect with you, where can they do that? Mm, well, um, I like to attend uh, different conferences and in, in events. It's also f interesting uh, time. It's not only like you know, it's not only communication about some something specific. You can just hang out a bit also. Yeah. So it's it could be like a leisure also. Which which are you going to one soon? So uh, yeah, there is in Warsaw one HR HR conference uh, on Monday. Right. so we'll attend that all right and if people listen to this you should go monday you said yeah oh, okay this will be this will come out after this one yeah it's the next soon. one go on go meet glad with the next one can they connect with you on linkedin oh uh, sure of course yeah so i'll if leave a link to your linkedin profile okay okay thanks so much club i hope you had fun i sure did thank you yeah i had
Uh, hope you had also. I did. I did. And that brings us to the end of the show. So after after we finished recording, Gleb informed me that he is working on a web development uh, boutique service, I guess. Uh, I don't know if it's a boutique like agency where he's going to be doing web development. I am leaving a link to his uh, service in the show notes uh, at wethesalesengineers.com slash show 273. By the way, if you're enjoying the po- the podcast, the YouTube channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you commented, if you left a review, uh, just so some interaction with the with the podcast. Let me know that this is useful for people. Let me know that this is useful for you, and to let more important to let people know that this is useful for them, because you know I want to help as many people as possible, and also I want to help myself because you know I've been working hard at this. Anywho. Uh, if you enjoyed my interview with Gleb, if you want to connect with him, reach out to him on LinkedIn, check out his, uh, his service, his website. And I think that's it for me. I will see you next time with that. I'm signing off.